हेलो एंड वेलकम डियर व्यूअर्स टू द अनदर इंफॉर्मेटिव एंड इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑन डिजोल्यूशन मेथड वैलिडेशन सी एज द डिजोल्यूशन टेस्टिंग इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टेस्टिंग फॉर द फॉर्मुलेशन एज द डिजोल्यूशन टेस्टिंग इज अ परफॉर्मेंस टेस्टिंग एंड डिजोल्यूशन टेस्ट यूज द important information about the bioavailability and the bioequivalence so dissolution method validation becomes very important for the formulations so these all the tests require validation all the analytical methods and analytical procedures require the validation before they are used for the testing of the commercial batches and testing at the commercial site also the method validation is a important step method transfer that is analytical method transfer verification validation is a very important stage in the product life cycle the exhibit batches or uh, commercial uh, scale up batches validation batches requires testing with the final test procedures that's why the analytical method validation has much more importance in the product life cycle so why validation is required see first of all the validation is required to meet the regulatory requirements and the compendial requirement of the validation validation means generating and establishing a documented evidence that the method will be performing as it is required to perform and validation means we are making a evidence that the method is specific and it will work for the product that means validation is also required to ensure the method is suitable for the product it is robust and it is transferable transferable from r&d to the commercial site and from different commercial sites to the other commercial sites or between the commercial sites also validation is also required to ensure that the method is accurate the method is precise and the method is reliable to generate the meaningful data that's why the dissolution method validation is very very critical and very important stage in the method validation so anything which have the impact on the method sensitivity that may be the specificity that may be the resolution parameters that may be the media whatever it is which is specific for the method those things are required to be validated this is very simple and logical meaning and requirement for the resolution method validation now what are the requirements for the validation what you will need to start the validation so i have enlisted some of the requirements the requirements may be varying from product to product and organization to organization and also as per the stages of the development so generally the pre validation activities are completed before starting the actual validation some people call it as verification come validation or mini validation or verification pre validation so terminologies are different but the meaning are same then resolution method should be there and parameter should be there resolution data for the good optimized or final prototype batches and the bad formulation batches so resolution data should be available before going for the validation so that you will understand the understand that the resolution method whatever is fixed or resolution parameters whatever are fixed will give you the discriminatory power or will have the discriminatory power for the good and the bad formulation batches then you should have acceptance criteria for the formulation 
for example if you are making a tablet of highly soluble uh, uh, api pcs class 1 or 3 then generally you will give the acceptance criteria of not less than 80 percent q at 15 minutes and depending on the formulation and the bcs class and the requirements for bioequivalence for the formulation the acceptance criteria will be fixed see this acceptance criteria should be there before going for the validation then this validation then this uh, acceptance criteria can be changed in the later stages of the product life cycle and based on the regulatory queries and the requirements then defined filters and sinker should be used and these are should be these uh, filters and sinker should be predefined method sensitivity should be identified surfactant cms if surfactant is used then surfactant critical material attributes and vendors and sources are required to be finalized then you should have minimum three validation three formulation batches for validation then validation protocol should be there with elements to be validated with their acceptance criteria and the sops whatever the sops are related these sops should be in place you should have a written validation protocol so this is regarding the requirements now components of the uh, dissolution method validation so the components are accuracy precision specificity system suitability filter compatibility linearity and range repeatability and reproducibility robustness and solution stability also before going for the validation you should have solubility data that may be the bcs solubility along with the equilibrium solubility so first we will see the accuracy here you can see the figure all the uh, the arrows are into the red area and two of these are into the yellow area so aim is in the yellow area and the range is in the red area also so the results are accurate accuracy is the closeness of the results to the actual value if this is the actual value so these are the accurate results because these are close to the actual value accuracy of the actual dissolution value to the obtained results it is very simple and how accuracy is checked to check the accuracy spike known amounts of the drug substance known concentration solution or ppm level or percent solution spike at different concentration and these concentration are generally ranging from the 10 to 120 percent or 150 percent of the working level in the sample solution containing the placebo you should add the placebo in the bowl and you should spike the known amount of the drug substance solution and why this is 10 to 120 or 150 because this is as per the label claim that will give you the working level in the sample solution containing the placebo the recovery is then calculated in percentage of the known level of known level to the found level if you are injecting a solution of 10 percent of the label claim you should get the 10 percent value the relative standard deviation that is rhd percent rhd of the replicate runs for recovery are considered for the accuracy you should always check the relative standard deviation to know about the accuracy second is the precision precision means the measurements are very close repeatedly that means it refers to how close measurement of the same item are to each other and to both intermediate precision or repeatability this is also can be called as repeatability here all the arrows are close to each other this is precision so whatever repeat repeat analysis is there results are similar or close to each other Re precision is used to assess the variability in the results obtained by different analysts on different days or using different instrument within the lab calculate the rhd also for samples from six dissolution vessels samples withdrawn six times from the same dissolution vessel it is very simple it is also can be called as repeatability 
similarity and the variation between the multiple measurements of the same sample by the same user by the same equipment so this is regarding the precision this these are the basics then coming to the specificity your method should be specific your analytical method should detect the specific required analyte it should be very specific it should pick up the required the formulation contains the excipients right it also contains the impurities if the formulation is a combination type of formulation then there may be two or more apis present into the same formulation it contains excipients that is the placebo and these things may interfere with the detection or specific detection so that the specificity is required now what is specificity this is the ability of the method to detect and determine the specific drug substance or api released or dissolved out of the dissolution medium blank excipients that is placebo and the impurities it in simple meaning it should specifically pick up the required api or required drug substance released that is the simple meaning of specificity so that you will understand that the method should be specific and this specificity is required to be validated then system suitability checking and validating the suitability and effectiveness of chromatographic system for the reliable result if your system is not suitable that means the results may not be reliable the system suitability testing it is also abbreviated as sst it is used to verify that an analytical method was suitable for the intended purpose and the day of the and at the day of the analysis was done the system suitability parameters are for example column efficiency or theoretical plates tailing factor symmetry factor resolution rhd for the peak area responses and retention times between six standard replicates and evaluate against the predetermined acceptance criteria are to be recorded so in system suitability you need to be very sure and you need, need to validate the parameters these are mainly the column efficiency tailing factor resolution and rst then filter compatibility and validation see the filters are used into the dissolution testing and these filters are made from different materials these filters may leach or may retard uh, or may entrap the drug substance or may interact so that filter compatibility is tested and filter validation is done filter in the dissolution testing separates the dissolved drug from the undissolved drug component or doses components that's why this stop the dissolution process if you have taken the sample without filtration that sample will contain the undissolved material also and that undissolved material will keep on dissolving when you keep that solution that's why you will not know the exact amount released at the specific time interval so filters are used filtration stop the dissolution process and allows for accurate quantitation through separation of the dissolved and undissolved components leaching of the chemicals from the filter inadequately filtering out the undissolved api or absorbing dissolved drug materials these are the para, these are the very uh, important things to understand why this filter compatibility is done and why validation is done the types of filters are like cannula filters proplast filters full flow filters air filters or dissolution filters and the people who are working on the dissolution they are very much known to these type of filters responses from the filtered and unfiltered standard and sample solutions are to be compared so dissolution is performed with filter and without filter and then you compare the results generally the dissolution 
run without filter will you give you the variations and also will give you higher dissolution results compared to the dissolution run with filter because the undissolved material will keep on solubilizing or dissolving when the, the sample is kept while the dissolution with filters will not vary much because by the filters the undissolved material is separated assess the recovery in the filtered and unfiltered standard and sample solutions here the dissolution is to be checked for recovery in the filtered and unfiltered standard and the sample solutions filters in the dissolution testing separate the dissolved drug from the undissolved dosage components stopping the dissolution process filtration stop the dissolution process and allow for the accurate quantitation through separation of the dissolved and undissolved components so these are the very important parameters to understand here then filter compatibility and validation the second part of the same topic this is required to assess the recovery in the filtered and unfiltered standard and sample solutions chemical compatibility filter efficacy and filter absorbance these are the three important terminologies to understand see the chemical compatibility means these filters can leach the filter material into the solution that's why the filter should be compatible with the api and solvents to be studied then filter efficacy to determine that the filter effectively removes the undissolved api from the dissolution media and stop the dissolution process of the sample or not so filter efficacy is there and filter absorbance this is required to study to ensure that filters do not absorb or adsorb dissolved api and lower the actual result if these filters absorb the dissolved api then you will get the dissolution results on lower side then linearity and range see here this linearity and this is the linear range shown in the figure linearity test results proportionally or direct in direct relation to the concentration or level of analyte in the solution suppose you have made solution with different concentrations and you have injected and some response you got at certain level or at certain concentration there will not be any increase in the response so that means that is your saturation level or that is the last limit of your linear range now what is range interval between the lowest and the highest concentration or level of analyte in the solution so this is the range from here to here you can get the in this concentration range you are getting the linearity and this is the range so prepare and analyze the solution of lowest to highest working range like 50 uh, 10% to 150% here consider the label claim as 100% or the complete release of 100% estimate the rsd of the responses peak areas and the retention time then calculate the linearity and range linearity should cover all the doses strength if the product has multiple strength this is very important sen sentence and the people who are working on the dissolution will uh, be very known to this thing as uh, you prove that the all the multiple strength uh, product has the linear concentration in the range so that with the same parameter you can run the dissolution then repeatability and reproducibility rsd of the sample taken from six dissolution vessels and in the second rsd of the samples taken from one dissolution vessel for six times then robustness method ability to be unaffected by small variation in the method parameters to have reliability of the method during normal uses see whenever your method is going to the commercial side some variations will be there in the day to day and from batch to batch analysis the method parameters if these are varying by normal range 
then your method should be robust and your method should not get affected by these small changes or small variations and where these variations may happen these are in the buffer concentration rpm or speed mobile phase preparation media differences and the ph differences many more can be added here but the your resolution method should be robust then solution stability see whenever the dissolution is performed the drug goes into the solution that may be the, in the uh, dissolution media and your standard goes into the standard solution so that you can compare the results and solution stability is the stability requirement for the sample and the standard as well the length of the time in which the samples and standards give similar results as the results of the freshly prepared samples for example you have prepared the standard and you kept it for 2 3 hours and next time you prepared the sample freshly so there should not be difference into the freshly prepared sample and the samples which are kept for some time standard and samples to be validated separately see your sample will be having different treatment as your drug is going into the solution or into the media that may be the buffer media or ph media or acidic media and then you are going to dilute it but this is not happening with the standard solution because standard solution may or may not be prepared in the same way determination at the different temperatures and times and also in amber color glassware if the if the material is photosensitive or formulation is photosensitive or your api is photosensitive so these solution stability to be determined and data should be there in the resolution method and based on that data the dissolution method is required to be designed so for making this video i have referred ich guidelines for the validation of analytical procedures guidance for the industry for dissolution testing of ir formulations usp chapters for dissolution testing and the standard literature on the validation of dissolution so in summary we have seen the dissolution method validation and the components then we have also seen the requirement and the importance see dissolution method is a important method because it gives the information and data about the bioequivalent and bioinequivalent batches which are going into the commercial market and which are to be consumed by the patient that's why in the today's time dissolution method validation is a topic of great interest for the regulators and also for the interviewers so keep watching the videos on pharma learning in depth channel please do like share and subscribe and i am very happy to see that the people are watching these videos and by their response i am going to make many more topics for you keep watching keep learning also share with your friends so that they will also learn these topics thank you for watching the video